know, to be able to walk into these doors anytime, 24-7, and have something going on that people can just connect to. Uh, we want more preschool, more teens, more people in their 30s and 40s, more families. And we want activities where, you know, these people, um, they, they'll draw them and they'll make them want to come more than just, you know, the spiritual activity. Um, we want a spiritual night. We want a fun night. Um, and then one of the things that we talked about is I belonged to an organization called Junior League of Cleveland back in the day. We would have projects that were called Done in a Days. And I think this would um, help. We talked about, you know, young people want to do things. And Done in a Days are a thing where you have one concept, somebody puts it together. We, we reach out to an organization and say, what do you need? And so one person will get the supplies and the materials and all that, and then there's just a strike force that comes in, we paint a room, or we rebuild a garden, or we, you know, clean up a garden somewhere in the city, where we as a community reach out. And that, if the community sees us doing these positive things out in the world, and then they turn around and say, well, who are you guys? You know, and then that becomes a draw to them. But young people like to do things. They don't like meetings. They don't like, you know, they're so busy. But they're very generous and kind people out in the world. But if we give them a venue, you know, where it's already organized for them and they can just show up and help, you know, we're going to attract a lot of people by doing that. So that was one of our things. Um, and then more classes, parenting classes, where we would advertise to the community. We have parenting classes, or art classes, or cooking classes, or gardening classes that aren't just advertised to us, but out, you know, put up a sign in Trader Joe's, put up a sign in Home Depot, bring them through the doors. And once they're in the doors, they're like, who are you people? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you want to, you know, kind of stick around. Um, one of the things that we talked about are DIY classes. But not only just to do and learn the skills, but then say, okay, now you have these skills, we're gonna go out in the community and do something. Mm -hmm. So we have a woodworking class, we're gonna go build a ramp, we're gonna have a plumbing course or electrical course, we're gonna go to you know the senior center and do something for them. So we're gonna have a class where they can learn the skills and then go out and make them a manifestation of what they learned. Um, for all this, we're going to need an activities director because we got a lot of business going on here. <laughs> and we even talked maybe about a preschool or a daycare or something like that. So, you know, we're just, we're buzzing. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to need a much bigger camp. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. Balloons and children, lots and lots and lots more children. A fully integrated community. Age, religion, nationality, socioeconomic, it doesn't matter, they'd all be here. Um, the center of the community. Elevated music program with a youth choir. Love in action. That we would be community lunches, community garden, community programs about current issues. Just um, all about getting out there and being out in the world so that the world sees us and knows who we are and what we represent. So growth for unity. Um, a community leader. And living exemplar of love in action in the world. And um, there's our symbol. <laughs> Might, might be a little bit difficult to reproduce, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a seeing love around the world. Aww. Yeah. Aww. I think we uh, definitely have a lot of what people have already said already, um, but we de did the same uh, idea of we are here in the middle as the spiritual host. Um, Maybe not, it is the building, we are the uh, meaning as well as a place. So that is kind of what our theme was, that we wanted to combine both those ideas and that's what we see for the future is that so much of what we said in the first part, that the place is so important, the people are so important, the hugs, the, the service is so important to a lot of people um, that we don't want to see that go away, but we know that our message is out there. Um, that we want to send that message. So we want to be that meaning in that in the community, which which leads to that we're the name at the top of the list whenever anybody searches for anything, whether on the internet or when they're talking to somebody, you can find that there. Unity is the place to be, or the place to go to find what it is you need. 
to find your answer, to help you with education, to help you with whatever your need is or whatever you have as a resource. Um, not just a need, but hey, I can give my time and talent to that place. So that the arrows are going both ways, right? Our love is going out and it's also coming in. You know, taking off that idea of receiving is very important as well. So that it's both ways and that we're open to both ways. Um, this whole idea, I think we really talked about this virtual uh, unity message going out, so it's not, everybody has that opportunity, the accessibility, whether not just monetarily, but um, physically, uh, in whatever way you show up or can be here or can't be here, that we're, we are there anyways. We are always there um, to express and to help you find that Christ within you, your spirit within you, whether it's through education, or connectedness, however it is you want to connect, we want to be that connector for you. If it's not for us, if it's for something else, we are going to be that connector for you. That's, I think, the, the key here for the community resource. We want to bring people into to dialogue, whatever the issue is in the community, um, whatever it is. Uh, it, there is no limit to what that dialogue can be, but we want to be that place, that education place where people go to talk, to be that sacred space, to hold that sacred space for people, whatever it is, um, and to create that wherever they are. So they don't have to come here, we'll go there, or we'll support that out there. Um, what else? And, uh, families, always important to create that sense of education. Somebody said it earlier that we're educating parents and families and supporting the youth and, and doing all of that. Um, and I think it's small, but it's huge that we are that hug. We're the hug for our community and for the world. And somebody had that in their picture. We're the hug around the world. I think virtually or physically, that's what we want to be. Nice. Thank you. Lots of conversations. Like someone else said, you know, it's the boss that you we want to see in our future a real bus, bus that says USC on it and, and that can drive around and pick up people, obviously, that do not have a way to get here, but to use it frequently so people see us. We're out here. We're out there. So big time. Advertising signs, you know, flashing, lights flashing, you know, whatever. Um, and I, I don't know which way I see this better. Um, the visions are more family engagement programs and an actual place where the community can come and parents can learn from each other about child raising and, and, you know, this is how I solve this problem with my toddler or when the baby's crying. And then working up through clubs in age-appropriate classes, like all of our young people probably from the toddlers, you know, up, with like an IT class. Oh, let's do coding. Okay, what's a coding? Well, what do I care? But I could go and watch and find out. So we're all involved. And then we have the uh, next generation group that's not doing, maybe it's just not doing anymore. But we need to push these things in the community. And you know, then the mid-life people and, you know, goodbye, you're going to college, how do I solve the empty nest? Right up to us experienced citizens. Uh, besides lunch, we like to do other things, so let's, let's find out what they are. We are seeing an overflow church closer in to, or actually in Cleveland, whatever, and possibly two very different services at these two churches. 
one more traditional, lots of meditation, what have you. And we're talking Saturday and Sunday, so you know where to go. And, of course, more ministers. We don't want Joanne to pass out here. Um, and then the more upbeat, you know, let's all get up and sing, and let's do this and that and dance around. So everybody's got a piece of unity, but it's a little more traditional or contemporary. Whatever you want, we got it. Um, transportation, uh, that takes them the new formats. Oh, and we talked about social activism, not political. We don't want to go there. But to have like talks and have people come in and maybe hear about things like what in the heck is going on with human trafficking in our area? You know, relevant things to us where we live. And it's like, nah, that doesn't, it happens. But that kind of social activism. And I think that kind of covers it more. Here. For the camera. Okay, so. Our picture ended up to be a lot of what we talked about. So we're starting off with the very center of who we are, that divine source of who we are. But we're also receiving violet rays of light from divine source into that center, which then creates a ripple effect, which goes around and around and out. And it, it's an infinity kind of a symbol Somebody else came up with that too, um, of just it being constant and ongoing. And so the, the, the features of that came from these thoughts. So we're looking at, you know, being a practical spirituality, being able to present everything that we have out into the masses. So what came up was not just a facility, but a place outside of our facility where our message is able to, to reach out to thousands and thousands all over the world. And so that has to happen, though, through practicing our own spiritualities, being it practical and making it happen. And so we talked about having a healing center here, a place where uh, sound and the light and the violet ray of light comes, where we can heal past, our past, Expanding time for sitting in the silence and meditation, um, which is very powerful when there's a large group of people. We're, we're talking about doing that even in, within the service of having a more expanded uh, sitting in the silence time as a community. And then also uh, creating space for our children, um, having a, you know more grounds, more buildings here for our children, but not limiting it to space here, physical space. We're talking about outside now. And so creating an opportunity for our youth to possibly do online meditation service or something that they're actually doing. Uh, somebody came up with FaceTime where the kids are FaceTiming with other Unity churches and they're connecting with each other that way. So bringing in, again, that technology that is out there that our youth are so into and they're so quick at, you know, but, but taking advantage of that in a spiritual component and bringing our message out. Because we recognize that while we have a, a, a healthy and growing um, Youth of Unity program, some centers still deal with having two kids. And they don't really have the same kind of community. If they can Skype, if we can set that up and do, you know, you know, Skyping across the country, that would be just awesome for the kids. And then we also talked about having parenting uh, opportunities for parents, you know, gatherings where they could socially get together. If their families and children, great. If not, just put separately so that they have opportunities to learn more about how to engage and encourage our youth that are coming into this lane of existence now that are so amazing and how to deal with that 
how to how to help exp help them to express the divine that they are today. Because we have some phenomenal children right now in our community that have some amazing ideas and concepts that they're teaching us as t as youth leaders and facilitators as we're working with them. So wow, let's let's figure out a way to harness that and bring that out into some engagement with parents as well. So I think that was it. So violet rays of light, expanding our way of life in the ripple effect. And looking at what people need here now. And when people come into this church, they're either going through transformation or they get into it. So services to support that, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, to fill the people's needs that, that are going through this type thing. To help them overcome challenges uh, through you know, our classes, our work uh, groups, uh, prayer partners, that all those types of things. Um, and we want to attract young people and families, people that have needs too. They have needs uh, to take care of their children, to expand those areas, to have more uh, things to support them physically with a changing table, um, handicapped people, ramps to help them be in clear spaces where they can be, uh, child room, like maybe in that area, where they can uh, take a child that's a baby into that room and hear what we were having. We can't hear them cry in the cry rooms, that kind of thing. Um, um, and so by filling these needs, the thought is that uh, we will attract people that, that have those needs to want to go through transformation. Um, so growing, growing the youth and family to participate, uh, having other people, like a lot of the things you were talking about before, um, but more focus on you know, personal growth, going through transformation, um, you know, releasing our fears and our angers and worries, and seeing more of the, the spiritual perception of, of life. Um, that's kind of what we all come here for, to expand that into um, groups of people, classes, and so forth. Um, so to facilitate deeper healing, and maybe people that have uh, jobs that do that type of thing could offer it at uh, more reasonable prices, because so many people who go through transformation, you know, they lose their job, they lose their relationship, you know, they have all these issues. And we seem to be that type of place. I've been here since 82. <laughs> And I've seen people come in that have those issues. And if we could have more services to support that person, and then that person supports the other person. I myself have gone through that, and am supporting now, I'm supporting other people to go through that. So I, that's what I see on my side of the fence, and our group kind of connected with that uh, in a lot of different areas. Okay. Um, is this on? So, we actually had three separate but connected visuals of what we manifested into the future. And the first one is a giant fountain, a water feature that we might add here at Unity Spiritual Center. And the base of the fountain is, of course, divine source, which we're all a part of. And then as we grow, we keep adding layers or more towers to our center. And we are the droplets of water as we spray our love out into the world. The other visual that we had um, was from Jerry. And we are Unity Spiritual Center, the central Unity Hub, which is portrayed by a computer screen. And the love and unity principles that we practice, we send out into the world in all different directions, just like the sprays of water. 
And finally, Terry's idea was we can be manifested as a giant bus. Reverend Joanne is driving the bus. And it continues the idea that we want to continue. The main idea is that we want to continue to grow. We want to reach out into our community and spread our message globally so that the unity principles and love that we practice benefit the entire world and we keep picking people up along the way. Bring them back to our hub and our beautiful fountain. A lot of what we've heard already is incorporated in we thought also, a mini unity village came to mind very quickly and everything that that offers. But there was also talk of going inward and coming outward. The mini unity village represents that outward manifestation. And, when, and we talk about having a, a, a place for centered wellness in that village, for children and family with child care, a beautiful garden, and that's what the flower represents there. <laughs> that's really open, welcoming, large doors, community dinners. It's just a real place where people can come together and experience their spirituality together. Now, on the inward breath. This, that's kind of the outward breath. The manifestation out into the world is the Minity Village. But then the inward breath, this kind of infinite cycle of going in, coming out. And going in deep in the waves of consciousness and coming out. That going in is getting more tools that allow us to experience the divine within and having community support for those tools. That's core to bringing out our spirituality. And also encouraging everybody to have a prayer partner. Because that again is an experience of your spirituality with another individual. So the bottom part is that going in, the top part is that coming out, and it's an infinite cycle. And it manifests itself in the world in the growth of a garden. That's right.